<laughs> Sergio Leone's 1984 gangster epic Once Upon a Time in America is considered by many to be the filmmaker's magnum opus. The director of For A Few Dollars More, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly and Once Upon a Time in the West is said to have first become interested in the story in the late 1960s. He worked extensively over the years to bring the project to fruition, even passing up the opportunity to direct The Godfather. The eventual footage for the movie ran for 8 to 10 hours, with Leon planning to release the movie as two 6 hour films. The studio rejected this idea and Leon was forced to repeatedly cut down the film until he presented a 3 hour and 49 minute version. This version was released in Europe to critical acclaim, however, for American audiences, the studio cut down the film further to around two and a half hours, chopping and changing the film and removing the film's non-linear story structure, and this version of the film is considered a mess. As actor James Woods put it, a critic dubbed the 2 hour and 24 minute version the worst film of the year, and when the same critic watched the 3 hour and 49 minute version, he called it the best film of the decade. Even the 3 hour 49 minute cut of the film, though it is considered the definitive version, is said to have left out elements that Sergio Leone considered essential, such as a further explanation of the mob and labour union relationships, Noodles meeting Carol, and a significant amount of footage of Noodles' relationship with Eve. There have been lost and deleted scenes of the film which have become available in subsequent years, many of which are included in a longer Martin Scorsese-led restoration cut, but we will probably never see anything close to Leon's original vision. This is all very relevant to today's video topic. Once Upon a Time in America stars Robert De Niro as Noodles, a former Prohibition-era Jewish gangster who returns to his world of crime where he must confront the ghosts and regrets of his old life. His childhood friend and former partner in crime is Max, played by James Woods. The film also stars the likes of Jennifer Connelly, William Forsyth, Danny Aylo, Treat Williams, Burt Young, and Robert De Niro's longtime friend, Joe Pesci. It's surprisingly easy to forget that Joe Pesci was in Once Upon a Time in America. When you think of Pesci's filmography, movies like Goodfellas, Casino, Raging Bull, My Cousin Vinny, The Irishman, Home Alone, and the Lethal Weapon movies come to mind. Very rarely do I ever hear Leon's film come up in the conversation. In fact, I remember getting into a bit of a disagreement in the comment section with a guy a long time ago where I was trying to convince him that Pesci was even in the film, even though he had already seen it. But who can blame him? Pesci is only really in one scene of significance. Pesci appears in the film shortly after Robert De Niro's character is released from prison and he rejoins his gang who are now in the bootlegging business. Max introduces Noodles to Pesci's character Frankie Mondali and Burt Young's character who plays his brother Joe. Frankie makes small talk with Noodles and his crew before tasking them with a diamond robbery. The heist goes as planned, but to Noodles' surprise, when his crew meet with the Joe Mondali to hand over the diamonds, they kill him. It appears that Frankie had made a deal with Max which involves them killing his own brother so he can expand and consolidate his power, and Noodles is angry that the gang has chosen to work with such people. Thus, Frankie is revealed to be a greedy, treacherous fiend. The gang next spend a fair chunk of the movie's runtime collaborating with local union leader Jimmy O'Donnell, who is shot by a rival and while he is recovering in hospital, the gang visits him and Jimmy's attorney tells the gang that prohibition may be ending and offers them work in legitimate business. Max likes the idea but Noodles is unconvinced and would prefer the gang work for themselves. The two head downstairs and have a brief argument, the two decide to go for a swim, and while they are walking away, Joe Pesci is shown looking in deep thought, with sinister, ominous music in the background. He heads for the elevator, presumably to go upstairs where Jimmy and the remaining members of Noodles and Max's gang are. And well, that's it. Joe Pesci isn't in any of the remainder of the film. He straight up is not referenced again. I think when I first watched it, at the time I thought he was up to some kind of shady shenanigans, perhaps going to turn Patsy and Cockeye against Max and Noodles, but because so much stuff happens in the film later on after this, you end up forgetting about Pesci and his character's arc, and it's one of those questions that pops up in your head after many rewatches. What happened to Joe Pesci's character? 
why did he just disappear from the film? In hindsight, it is so bizarre how he just ups and goes from the film. In fact, there's many interesting aspects to Pesci in the film. Apparently, he originally auditioned for the role of Max. That would have been something, wouldn't it? De Niro and Pesci were close friends in real life and have often played close friends or blood relatives, mainly in Scorsese films. But as Sergio Leone said, he wasn't quite right for the role of Max. I mean, Pesci is so quintessentially Italian-American, it would have been strange seeing him play a New York Jew. He was definitely in his element as Frankie. I mean, that scene with him, De Niro, Woods, Young and Forsyth was so cool. His casting was a favour to De Niro, who as Pesci's friend, recommended him for a role in the movie. Leone is said to have allowed Pesci to pick any role he wanted from the remaining uncast roles, and he chose Frankie. But in the original script, Frankie Mondali played a much larger role in the film's story, not just being in two scenes. Did Leone cast Pesci to keep his star De Niro happy, and then shorten the character's role because he didn't think that much of Pesci as an actor? Who knows? He was nominated for an Oscar for Raging Bull, but this was pre-Goodfellas Pesci, where Pesci had a pretty underwhelming 1980s decade. It's not like Leone would have felt compelled to make sure Pesci's role was a big one due to his star factor, because he quite simply was not a star at the time. Surely there's more to Pesci in the film. His second scene definitely suggests there was more story to be told. The sad truth may simply be that some of the mob storylines, and thus the meat to Pesci's character, were left on the cutting room floor as part of the many different scenes Leone had to cut from the film. But then why even include that second scene with the creepy music and Pesci looking like he's planning some shady stuff? Why not just have his scene earlier in the movie and leave it at that? I can't quite work out how he fits into the rest of the film's story after this scene, making the inclusion of Pesci's second appearance seem quite random in a film which is so deliberate and well thought out. He has no impact on the rest of the movie, and really the scene should have been cut. As I mentioned in a previous video, there is a very well-known theory that much of the film is an opium-induced dream on the part of Noodles, where conveniently, people like Max and Deborah betray him, so that the impact of his guilt of having caused his friend's deaths is lessened. Maybe you could somehow squeeze Pesci's second appearance into the dream theory, in that Noodles dreamt that Frankie was just another character who betrayed him, but it's a stretch. Or maybe weird things just happen in dreams, and this is one of them. I've thought about it, and the only real thing I can think of, aside from it referencing something that was cut, is that it was Pesci's character who gave Max the audacious plan to rob the Federal Reserve Bank in Manhattan. Max reveals this to Noodles while they are on vacation, and maybe it was a case of Cockeye or Patsy phoning him up, telling him about this new idea they've been given by Frankie. The planning has all been done, all it needs is a good crew. And the reason why Max didn't tell Noodles, and therefore us, about Frankie's involvement is because he knows Noodles has a low opinion of Frankie and would never agree if he knew he was involved. Yeah, I think that works. Maybe that was even the intention of the filmmakers, and I've only just caught on, making this entire video pointless. Perhaps Pesci turned up to give the crew a new mission, overheard Noodles not wanting to work for other people, so Pesci instead went to the other two men in the crew, who eventually told Max. Or maybe since Jimmy was a union leader and the unions were involved with the mob, Pesci was there to meet Jimmy in a plot that was cut. Even if the Federal Reserve heist wasn't the exact reason why Pesci was at the hospital, I guess you could call his cameo symbolism for the fact that Max and Noodles will keep on being dragged back into this treacherous, deceitful world of crime and their relationship will suffer for it. That Max was under Frankie's thumb and Jimmy would soon follow suit, but the exact details were not necessary to go into. Maybe Frankie was there to talk to Sharky, Jimmy's attorney, and wanted to eliminate Noodles along with the rest of the crew, given Noodles hadn't been playing ball. Sharky would have identified Max as an asset who wants to work for them, so maybe between Frankie, Sharky and Max, the trio concocted a plan for the gang to rob the Federal Reserve knowing the gang, Noodles included, would die, and Max would continue working with Frankie. But of course, Noodles ends up telling the cops. 
That would mean the goons that were after De Niro in the beginning of the film belonged to Frankie, who must have been furious that Max was killed and Noodles had ratted on the crew and escaped. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more Pesci's initially baffling appearance can be explained without having to resort to cut scenes or random theories. Or maybe, just maybe, Joe Pesci was originally a huge element of Once Upon a Time in America, and it would have gone down as one of his best gangster movies had we seen what Leon originally planned. So what do you think about Joe Pesci disappearing in the film? What do you think happened to him? Do you think either of my two theories make sense? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Before we finish, I'd just like to thank my patrons, Nicholas Curtis, Andre Millington, Daniel P and Countess Von Zarovic, and also my channel members, Michael Awatwi, Rikers, Damien Irving, The New On Guam 24, Lan Deng, Joe Grossberg and Cam Medina.